you goobers, this is going to be a lot of fun. Welcome to the Timber Room, and if you're at home, welcome to wherever you are. I hope it's nice. <laughs> Whoever that is, that's cool. Uh, my name is Bobby Higley. I'm the host here of this competition. Uh, we have some thank yous to give out, so let's hit those up real quick. Let's thank the Timber Room for hosting us. Woo! All right, let's give it up for AHF for giving us our fat-ass prize money. Yeah, and let's give it up to Queer Space Magazine for filming, for producing, and for doing all the legwork. Yeah, we love these people. So uh, this is a competition. We brought 12 of the best queer comedians that we could find, best comedians we could find to be legit. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, they've been competing, and we are now into our semifinals. Yeah. Which means every person that you will see today is already a winner, but not quite enough yet. <laughs> So make them more of a winner. You can vote here if you're in the audience, and you can vote at home. Uh, make sure you go to Queer Space Magazine. You will see the voting option in the below video portion. So yeah, cool. You ready for some queer shit? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I am excited for this. Everybody put your hands together for the first comedian who is going to be competing in the semifinals round. Everybody give it up for Riley McCarthy! Oh my god, me too! That's fantastic! How you guys doing? Hey, how's up? What's up? How you doing? See that? I'm intimidating, aren't I? I bring a strong vibe to the room. I'm very intimidating. I'm not a fighter, though. It's okay. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I know that's hard to believe. You look at me and you're like, this rustic badass is nothing but trouble. But no, inside this wonder ball, it's all just popsicles and party balloons. So don't worry. I'm not here to start a fight. Has anyone here recently been into a fight, like an actual physical confrontation? One person, <laughs> one confident clap from the back. No, it's true. I, this is the West Coast. You're all way too passive aggressive to get into real confrontation. I should know that. Um, but I almost got into a fight recently. Um, it was at a plaid pantry. Do you guys have those here? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that shouldn't surprise any of you that I almost got into a fight there once then. That's like, have you ever been to a plaid pantry after 1 a.m.? It's international waters. Anything goes. You know, there's babies smoking cigarettes, dudes rolling dice in the drink cooler. Pretty sure I saw a pigeon with an eye patch on, just like trying to bum a cigarette. Like, gotta see, gov, grr. I'm pretty sure I saw a pigeon running from basket to basket, stealing people's fruit like the monkey from Aladdin, just like, one step, head of the bread line. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw a pigeon working as the doorman, just, you shall not pass. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Um, so I was at a plaid pantry. It's 2 a.m. I just got done playing basketball in the rain with my parole officer. You know how it goes. And I'm in the plaid pantry, popping to get a Gatorade, and I run into a red lace. And it, do, you guys, do you guys know what a red lace is? So you guys know what it is? Okay, this will be educational. So what a red lace is, in skinhead Nazi culture, this is going to be fun, <laughs> these dweeb-ass nerds showed their rank in their organization by the color of their shoelaces. And to achieve the rank of red lace, you need to have beaten or stabbed a Jew, a person of color, an immigrant, or a queer person. Fun, right? Fun. Cool. Thank you, sir. And uh, so I see this guy, and he's got the full regalia, shaved head, SS tattoo, red laces. And as a queer man seeing in my neighborhood, I get pissed off, so I get in his face about it a little bit. I'm like, how'd you get those red laces? How'd you get those red laces, dog? Which, out of context, must have sounded insane to everyone else in the store. It's just like, footlocker, dude, shit. Get off his ass about it. <laughs> Um, but, and before you guys start to think that I was like being brave or heroic in this moment, I should probably mention that this guy was about five foot one, like wait, about a buck 30. He was one of those mini bigots, biglets I like to call them. <laughs> like when I say skinhead, I feel like you guys are all imagining Edward Norton from American History X. More imagine Edward Norton from Moonrise Kingdom, that's more of the vibe. <laughs> Like, honestly, if I wanted to, I probably could have just scooped him up, ran down the street, and thrown him in the river. Um, but nothing went down. Nothing went down. The, the, the person working the counter broke it up. 
And um, thank God, too, because I'm not, you know, I'm not a violent person. I'm a pretty much a poached egg of a human being. I lacked the structural integrity to engage in violence. <laughs> he broke it up, but it's, it's all I could think about. I obsessed over it for days, you know. Um, it's one of those things, you get into an altercation, that's all you can think about it. And the reason I think that it got in my head so much is the reason that I approached him, the red laces. It's like these bigoted, homophobic assholes have the gall to show their pride in their belief system with a colorful piece of flair. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is gay as shit, my dude. It just is. Like, you cannot appropriate pizzazz from the queer community. It's not allowed. All right, I've been Riley McCarthy. You guys have been lovely. Have a good night. <laughs> Put your hands together for the next comedian, Genevieve Ferrari. Hello, hello. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Uh, cat buttholes, dog wieners, the eye of Sauron. You can't look away and they're always watching you. That was a good way to start. <laughs> I'm a very non-confrontational person. Where am I non-confrontational? Where are the people here? Can I get a, a woo, a, just a timid woo from the people that don't like confrontation? Yep, that sounds about right. That's, that's us. I, I, I'm non-confrontational. I hate it. I don't like it. I fantasize about getting into arguments more than I fantasize about having a happy life. It's, uh, very, it's very unhealthy. It means I'm perfect for the city of Seattle. We're very non-confrontational people. I think we can all agree about that. We don't like that at all. Only time I've ever heard a Seattleite get angry is uh, when the back door of the bus won't open. <laughs> back door, please! Holy shit. A thousand fuck yous and one please. <sighs> it's scary. I talked so much shit about people that do that. And I did it the other day. I had to. I did it politely, I did it. Oh my God, I felt so powerful. Whew, I get it now. It's hard to feel powerful in public transportation. It, it really is too, it's very hard. And I'm gonna say this, I, I think it's especially hard if you're a woman. Uh, this part isn't a joke, it's just a, it's just a statistic. Um, I don't know if you know this, but 75% of a woman's life is actually just frantically untangling her headphones at the bus stop so that one weird guy won't talk to her. You keep untangling them and untangling them and it's like a, a horror movie where the bad guy is approaching and you have your key in the door but you can't quite get it, it's the wrong one. It's exhilarating. I do it sometimes to feel alive. I was at the bus stop not too long ago and it was just me and um, a strange man. I, that's rude. He was a str I don't know if he was a strange man. He could have just been a stranger. He could be really nice. I don't know. We could have hit it off. Uh, but at the time he was a strange man. Um, and, and, and I looked up and it sometimes just happens by miracle, by accident. I, I just, I made super deep eye contact with him. I, I fucked him. Uh, it was not on purpose. It was one of those accidental eye fucks. But I, you know, I don't know if this is just like a woman thing, but I was like, oh my God, did I just lock eyes with my future murderer? <laughs> oh my God. He gets on the bus, then you get on the bus, then you get off the bus, then he gets off the bus. It's all part of the chase. <laughs> because he's chasing you. <laughs> what do you do though? I feel like there is a little bit of a disconnect. I don't feel like I have to explain it here, but I feel like in a lot of straight rooms I have to explain. Gentlemen, if you, uh, when a lady makes eye contact, I feel like oftentimes I'll be like, oh my God, she wants me to talk to her. <laughs> And you are like, no, 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 no. What do you do? What do you do? Do you apologize to the gentleman? Oh my God. These old things. I am so sorry. I did not mean to lead you on with my eyes. I was just using them to see. Oops. 
Next time I'll do something sexier, like winking at you. <laughs> what do you do though? You walk around with your eyes closed? I don't know. Can't get a seeing eye dog for being a woman. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work. Are you guys ready to go to a dark place with me? <laughs> I'm so sorry if you shook your head. I'm so sorry, but you were going there. So uh, my apologies. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I go by this sign, uh, sign on my way to work. Um, and it is for, a, uh, it is for an eating disorder clinic called the Emily program. Very, very cool program. Very, very cool pro program. But the sign is, uh, I went there. That's how cool it is. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you got me, it's a cool program. Uh, but, uh, it, the sign is really fucking stupid. It says, have you ever beaten yourself up with the donut? <laughs> uh, I have uh, suffered from anorexia and bulimia, but I don't really know how you do that. Do you uh, tie a string down the center of the donut, wait till it gets real stale and just self-flagellate like an old-timey monk? <laughs> I told that joke a lot. And then I checked into one of their clinics, but first they asked me, how do you hear about us? And I didn't want to say, I've been talking shit about your sign and open mics for months. <laughs> so instead I just said, I saw your sign. <laughs> All right, my name is Jenny Freud. Thank you. Give it up one more time for Genevieve Ferrari. Okay, and now it is time for the last competitor of this portion of the show. Give it up for Mitch Mitchell. Hi, hi. Um, my name actually isn't Mitch Mitchell. Uh, my name is Bjarka. That's uh, B as in boy, J-A-R-K-E. Um, it was my chosen name. My mom did not stutter when I was born. My legal name is not Mitch Mitchell. As a trans person, you get the one luxury of choosing your name. You get to redefine how you are. And I didn't just want to be anyone. I didn't want to be like a uh, Chris. <laughs> Tim. What's your name? Nancy. Nance. Oh, well, damn it. <laughs> I ain't no Nancy, that's for sure. No, um, I want to honor my heritage. Uh, my mother is a piece of Ikea furniture. Um, it's also the sound that a cat makes when it throws up. Uh, but I learned that after I named myself Bjarka. The goal of the name was to make something a little white sounding for job applications. But I went like too far white, like way too far white. When people call me on the phone, like a telemarketer will say, hi, is Bajarka there? And I say, yes, I'm here, but you can call me Mitch. And essentially I paid the county, King County, $200 so I could say, you can just call me Mitch. Hence the name Mitch Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, is anyone watching The Bachelor? Did anyone watch The Bachelor? Woo! Okay, kind of. That's how I know what straight people are up to. <laughs> and how they date. I only know two straight people, my landlord and my boss. <laughs> and they, I'm pretty sure they know each other as well. <laughs> so from what I gather... The way straight dating works, if you're a man, or a woman, I guess, you get like 10 matches on Tinder. Half of them are named Lauren. And then the most diverse one has glasses. <laughs> and then you go on a date as a whole group to get like your pheromones tested. And that was actually, that was a real date on one of the Bachelor seasons. And then you give the person or people that you like roses, and that happens for six weeks until there's one left, then you get on the cover of People, and that's how babies are made. <laughs> I don't know if a queer bachelor would work, 
Um, for a lot of reasons, A, America's just not ready. <laughs> and B, it would only last about two weeks because we'd all be poly at the end. <laughs> and I'll be together. <laughs> so in my mind, it would be like you go on this group date and then the bachelor would be, and of course it'd be gender neutral, so they'd just be called the batch. <laughs> you'd go on these dates, and then at the end of one episode, you'd say, I'm really digging everyone's energy <laughs> and everyone's vibe. Will you accept this rose quartz crystal? If I had a dating show, it would be called Mitch, Please. <laughs> and the primary goal for me would be to find a partner who I would marry for health insurance. <laughs> and then they would win because they'd be dating someone named Mitch Mitchell. So it's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, I'm Mitch Mitchell. everybody this has been a great episode yes thank you to everybody else who uh everybody who put this on ahf queer space magazine and timber room y'all have been amazing we'll see you for the next one